Hello, 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 beautiful community. It is so wonderful to be back with you. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you are watching this. Thank you for joining. My name is Jacqueline Boyd. I'm the owner and founder of The Care Plan. And this is kind of a renewal of our, uh, what used to be weekly Instagram lives. We're now gonna be transitioning to monthly. And our theme this month is you are a gift. You are a gift. So we have Vic and hi Imani as well. Wonderful to see you. Uh, Vic will be joining us as the guest today and we'll be having the chance to talk through what it means to be a gift, what our gifts are, how we think about things like the gift of aging or the gift of healing. Uh, so I'm gonna bring Vic on right now and thank you everybody for joining us. So we'll give it a minute. Sometimes technology is with us, sometimes it's not. Hello, friend. Hello, hello. How are you? Doing. You're doing pretty good? Yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. I am so, 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 so glad to hear it. So glad to see you. Um, just a quick question. Is my connection coming through clearly? And can you hear me OK? I can hear you okay. I feel like there's like little moments where I'll think you're not speaking yet. And so maybe we're on a slight delay, but I can hear you. <laughs> That's quite possible. That happens from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome. I feel like we should probably tell people a little bit about who we both are. Uh, yeah. I already introduced myself as the owner and founder of The Care Plan. Uh, we've been in operation for going on seven years. This fall, it will be seven years for us. Uh, so I have the pleasure and honor of leading a team who does two different types of work. On one side of the business, we provide care navigation. That's one-on-one -on -one support for individuals and families around health and aging. That can look like getting resources, using our services to advocate for your loved one, or just trying to understand the new terrain of getting older. Um, or of chronic illness. So reach out to us if you need that support. On the other side of the business, we provide what we call care development, which is working with organizations to develop cultures of care uh, rooted in trauma-informed frameworks. We do a lot of work with LGBTQ plus and HIV serving organizations, and we'd love to partner with you on that too. And Vic happens mm -hmm. to be our training manager for the care development side. Vic, anything you care to share? Absolutely. Um, so yes, I get to manage that half of our business, which means that I have the pleasure of getting to support our existing and developing new uh, relationships with other organizations and values aligned businesses that have an interest in supporting their workers. Uh, thank you, Imani. Uh, <laughs> and have, have a, a really kind of clear commitment to um, a kind of culture of care that we talk about here a lot um, and, and creating that in their their businesses and in the ways that they work externally with clients, but internally with their own staff um, and with their community that they're part of. So it's work that I love endlessly, as you know. <laughs> yes. um, and I have some 20 years. In LGBTQ plus specific work and trans specific work around equity and access care. And that's also work that I feel very about. So, as you can or you look black and you see. <laughs> so Vic, I know you and I were really excited when we were brainstorming, like, okay, we took a break on our Instagram lives. We want to come back and be sure we have something to say and something to share. And I think we were both really inspired by this idea of you are a gift. 
and what that means in, in so many different contexts. So I'm curious for you, when we say that you are a gift or think about gifts, what comes to mind for you? And I'm going to mute myself just so that we can hear you super clearly. That little beautiful breeze behind you in the desert. <laughs> um, well, in truth, the first thing that comes up to my mind is that you and I are both part of the Affirmation Station Club, which means that, you know, huge parts of our daily lives are really committed to lifting up the people around us, not withholding praise, letting people know and giving them their roses today uh, in every way possible. And I know that that's very core to both who you and I are and who we are as, as business partners and, and all that. So I absolutely love that. But to me, the idea of you are a gift is in many ways the heart of you and I's relationship. So that's the first place my mind goes. What about you? <laughs> well, I think so too. And, and, you know, part of why I was excited about this conversation is because I feel like when you and I get a chance to talk, we are always talking philosophically and we are always, you know, lifting up each other and trying to bring, bring hope into the room, which I think we all really, really need right now. Um, so I too, I think about our relationship as one of the great gifts of my life. You know, in the ways that our relationship has unfolded and just gets deeper over time. And I think, you know, coming out of COVID, or not out of, but coming through, moving through COVID, um, this period in our nation that feels kind of endless in terms of disruption and grief and sadness, I think the people in the relationships we hold dear are some of our greatest gifts. And that's certainly you for me. Um, and I wonder, would you mind sharing a little bit from your perspective, just because we have gone from being, you know, friends to like best friends to chosen family and partners in this life to, and not, I don't want folks to think like traditional partnership, we're talking queer, queer partnership, <laughs> life partnership, um, in a particular way. And then to working together and being colleagues, which, you know, there's a lot of things in there that people might not consider a gift working with one of your closest friends, but has been for us, you know, especially these last couple of years. So I'm curious your, you know, how it's been for you and, you know, what that journey has been like. Yeah. You know, I'm glad we're starting here because we had initially discussed kind of starting somewhere else, but yeah. this is definitely, for me, this is our relationship is one of the tap roots of my life. Um, and is like a root that goes down to the center of the earth for me. And I, I am grateful for our, for our love every possible day. And I could have a love or a thousand of them just to, to talk about our love and our relationship. So before I get completely swept away there, which you know I could, um, and I actually kind of want to, I feel like part of what has been so incredible is that you know, as, as queer and as trans people and as people communities, we so often have to really make the road by walking. And we so often have to stand in the face of things that traditional wisdom might say is not something good, right? So it's like, you know, oh, never work with your friends, never work with family, never do, you know, uh, you know all these different things about like, who's a partner? What you were just saying about we're queer partners we have a lifetime commitment to each other, whether it's in work or elsewhere, we have made lifetime commitments that are about partnering in our lives, no matter what, through now, through aging, through the end of life and beyond, you know? And we have a super spiritual relationship um, that informs everything that we do together. And so what it has meant to also become, you know, business partners in all these really deep ways you know, there was a little fear at first of like, oh gosh, you know, is this going to be one of those things that is this going to be hard on our relationship? And it's been the opposite. It's been so profound to meet our challenges together and to come through them and to find them fortifying our love and fortifying our bond yeah. as we learn to navigate new challenges together. Because the challenges we have in a friendship or in a family ship are very different than business challenges. 
And so it's yet another layer of ways we get to love each other is finding our way through those and then being better for it. And that's yeah. just, that's a huge gift and a huge gift of learning because that's not something I've experienced before and, and been able to treasure the manyness that we get to be together, I think is one of those gorgeous examples of what queer love is and can be. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think about, you know, the many gifts that I think you and I, you know, have honestly in common, which is that, that movement towards hope, that uplift, and that ability to hold complexity in relationships, right? And I think you and I have always had shared values around that, which have definitely informed the business and the work that I do and the way I want to do the work, you know? And I think that, that as, you know, from the beginning, literally y'all, Vic, was we were in a room together writing down our values agreement. And Vic was in the room as a community advisory member of the business before he even dreamed he would one day, you know, work, work inside the care plan. So it's just been, I think there's so many places where we intersect on values and on how we want to show up for folks, but we're always still learning from each other and growing, you know, on our own paths as well. So I think, you know, it's so important, like your people, for everybody watching out there, claim your people let them know what they mean to you because that's what you and i have done and i think it's one of our greatest strengths in our relationship is like there's no question how i feel about you there's no question about how you feel about me those things are clear and it helps it helps on every step of the journey and it also helps to have confidence for the future i think absolutely i love how you just said that and i i'm seeing some wonderful support in the chat. Thank you, Imani. Um, I think this piece around claiming each other is so deeply, deeply important. And, you know, I was speaking to another member of our, our family last night, and we were talking about this very thing of, of what it means to claim somebody. And in ways that are, um, that defy, you know, um, colonial visions of ownership. Right. And that have no relationship to ownership of another human being or their person or their well-being or any of that, but is a, a claiming of like, you are mine and I am yours and we are in interdependence for life. And that, that kind of commitment that's like, you know, for me in some ways goes at times like deeper than, than what people conceive of a marriage as, right? Cause there's no, there is no end. There is no process of divorce. There is no will it work out. The commitment is there and it's, it just is something totally different. Yeah. And we've talked about chosen family here before. And, you know, I think that's one way to describe our relationship, but I think the magic of chosen family is in that claiming and is in that showing up. You can have close friends, you can have people that care about you, but there, it does change the dynamic to claim each other and to say, you are mine, I am yours, and I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, right now I'm, I know on the care navigation side, I, I'm working with a couple of clients who are so isolated mm -hmm. or who have been very disappointed and left behind and abandoned by people they thought were chosen family. And from my perspective as, you know, as being a, a little bit older than them, I'm like, you had the beginnings, right? Mm -hmm. But you had been through some things together, but you hadn't claimed each other yet. You know, it was, it was like friendship land. And there's a huge difference in, in articulating how you're going to show up for somebody. And I think that's, you know, if somebody is a gift in your life, let them know and let them know the bones behind that, how mm. you're going to show up for them, how you would like them to show up for you, where you feel vulnerable in the relationship, right? Where you're scared or terrified of the idea of being in relationship with anybody for that long. Like, cause that can also be terrifying, <laughs> but I just think there's so much power in that claiming and comfort in that knowledge when it's the right, the right alignment and the right fit. 
that exact track and you know i think as as queer and as trans people and as marginalized people at large so many of us our hearts yearn to be claimed with with an ache that is that is generations old you know and it's i think when we when we face our fears of how deeply we want and need that something different happens you know something really incredible happens so you know and i love what the beginning is part of my oh yes milani just joined us hello darling thank you for being here um you know part of what you and i came to in in our partnership with each other and in our realizations about what it means to to be in a lifetime commitment to each other is the vulnerability of the parts you don't necessarily share with everybody so for instance realizing we had to tell each other our, our health insurance information not insurance information right so if there's a health crisis going on in one of our lives or even not a crisis just here's some of the health stuff i come with if we're going to be partners for life that may be embarrassing for somebody else to know but people in your life who are really there kind of need to know that stuff um and it's you know it's not information for everybody and so it's it's certainly that level of trust oh my gosh yes i do believe zahara just joined that's exciting thank you and welcome to welcome to the party um you know that level of of intimacy to say you know here's some some health stuff i deal with and that i may deal with more as i age um that is a when we're talking about gifts you know having anyone in your life that you feel comfortable sharing your health information with even a provider but you know outside of that world is is beyond a gift because it's you know we're taught culturally in so many ways to like be ashamed of our bodies and be ashamed of any kind of you know whether it's a physical or spiritual or emotional vulnerability you know shut it down don't tell anybody don't let anybody know and certainly you know don't don't talk about it super freely so yeah. that's that's something that I love and I appreciate so much yeah and i know we've got some folks who have just joined hello hello we're so glad that you're here you're with Jackie and Vic of the care plan we are back and hopefully better than ever, <laughs> we are today talking about you are a gift and the idea of gifts and noticing and claiming and welcoming gifts into our lives. And Vic, what you were just talking about in terms of letting people in where we're vulnerable, what's really coming up for me is the fact that, you know, for so many of the people we work with, that identification even of who's really in your corner only happens in crisis. You know, we see people who come to us and are in the midst of a medical crisis. And all of a sudden, you're trying to heal, you're trying to make sense of your situation. And yes. And then you have to get comfortable or just sit in discomfort of explaining the ins and outs of your health situation which is, you know, I had seen that so much in my early career. And that's why I've been such an advocate, <laughs> even in our relationship to say, like, here's what's going on with me. And if I need something, here's how I'd like you to show up, because it doesn't happen on accident. And it, it just makes me think about for us, the gift of aging. And I'd really, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this. Because again, I get to talk to you all the time. Uh, but the folks in the room, you know, haven't had the blessing of hearing your experience and perspective. Can you tell me a little bit about how you think about the gift of aging for us as queer and trans community? Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Uh, this is a, a topic, yeah, that you and I have talked a lot about in part because of our business, um, but also in part because of that, that lifetime commitment to each other and saying, well, okay, we know, we know that this is part of what we're gonna do together is age. Um, the good and the bad and the ugly, right? Like it's not, a lot of it's not easy. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, in, in direct reference to the stuff you were talking about a few moments ago, 
you know, nothing is promised. And, and those of us, yes, and I'm seeing some support in the chat for this, right? Nothing is promised. And, and those of us from especially, you know, multiply intersecting more marginalized communities know that, know that not one moment is promised. Um, and, you know, we see that reflected around us all the time. We see it, you know, nationally and internationally in the news. We see it in our neighborhoods. We see it in our families, all of that. Um, and so it's, you know, yes, there's fear for a lot of people around aging and the ways that our bodies and our minds change. Um, exactly. Yes. Things go well. I'll be in this. There. Yes. Um, exactly. You know, it's, um, it may be challenging to look at aging and to, to face our own sort of mortality and all those things, but the alternative, right? The alternative is all the people that we've lost, right? And, and we are losing people constantly in our communities and having to hold the, the tremendous grief and the loss of the lives of our community members cut short. And so our relationships to the gift of aging are, are never far from our faces, you know, and, and our hearts. And so it's, to me, that's something that, um, yeah, I, I think about pretty frequently is just like, you know, even when I'm thinking about my son, you know, I have a two year old son, I'm hoping to get to be a part of his life for as long as possible. And I know none of that is promised. So I'm trying to think really carefully about how to build out a world and a, a community and a, a, a something for him so that when I'm gone, which could be sooner, could be later, he has a place to land. He has loved ones around him. You know, he has, um, he has had enough support to find his way through. Um, loss that is, that is you know, promised. A loss is promised. That's part of life, you know? Oof, yes, yes. And he's so blessed to have you as a parent, frankly. You know, and I think about this gift of aging, it's, it's very serious and very unique. You know, it's, it blows my mind because sometimes when people ask me, like, why I have, you know, I make the decisions I do or live my life a certain way, I'm like, this is the first time in the history of humans that we are living this long. Like, we're the first couple generations in the last few hundred years living past our 40s, 50s, you know, right. and people that are living, we have made so many strides in terms of nutrition and health and wellness and medicine that we, our generation, you and I's generation could potentially live to be 120 years old. And like, <laughs> what is that? That's right. Like, like 50 years beyond retirement age. <laughs> How will we do it? <laughs> so we have to think about this gift because we're going to be, you know, the generation and especially of queer and trans folks that get through middle age and get to say, what do we want this to look like? God willing. And I want to pause for just a moment and welcome someone that I respect and admire and have tremendous care for, which is Jaden. Thank you so, so much for joining us. What a pleasure. Um, Jack, what you just said, you know, yes, we talk a lot about, about hope together, but even in that moment of saying, we will be part of this generation that makes it past middle age, that's not something, I mean, you know, we're talking about nothing is promised. I literally say in my, you know, as a person, as a Jew, as a trans person, you know, all these things, the thought of, of getting to be older for me is, is something that like is, like I literally cross my heart and like say a prayer every time I think about it, you know? And I can't count the number of times that, you know, I'll be talking to someone who's not, not trans, frankly, and say, you know, in, in my community, I actually am an elder and I have been for a while, you know? And, and people, a lot of times will be, how can that be? And da, da, da. Well, you know, if you're not part of these communities, you may not know that, that, you know, 
you know, of course I have, I have chills while I'm talking about it, but you know, our people, a lot of times don't get to live super long for a whole bunch of different reasons. And so it's, um, you know, even saying things like our generation will be the ones to live past middle age. I, wow, do I want to believe that? I want to believe that. And I want to see it, damn it. I want to see it. I want to see it. And I want to see it for our people. Well, and that's where, you know, it, it, all of these threads are connected. That's where our relationship comes back because, you know, sometimes that, that fear, and you and I were talking about this in a work group we were doing today, that fear can feel like that's, that's the, the path that you're, you know, on. And like every step beyond the age where one of your friends, you know, passed away or is no longer with us. Like those markers are very serious. And I think it's important to have your people hold that space and hold those reminders that we have trans elders. We have trans elders in their 70s, 80s, 90s. That is a path too. It's not just death and loss or fear anymore. And we are continuing to build the world in a way that makes it safer, safer for our people. And, you know, just as somebody that loves you and cares for you and so many of the folks that are watching, we have to hold that for each other in those moments where it feels impossible or where your younger years and coming up and even, you know, the, the devastation of the present. Like throughout this conversation, I'm just thinking about, you know, our, our dear, precious, brilliant Elise, you know, and just that deep sadness that lives with us along with trying to hold the door open and remember that there are options and that we, some of us are going to make it. And what is that going to look like? And how do we want to model for those coming up behind us? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, because of all the, the intersectional stuff that, that so many folks bring to the table, we don't always know what we're looking at when we're talking to somebody, right? We don't always know why that might seem like something so precious or so not promised or so complex. You know, and so I'm, I'm so grateful we're having this conversation because it's, you know, what you're saying about holding each other through those losses and, and you and I have held each other through many of them. Um, you know, there is, there is so much to be said for continuing to not just hold each other, but hold on to um, our through lines together and the, and the gift of, okay, we both have people in our lives who have borne witness to us. And there's something about having existed and have had people to bear witness to your selfhood and your self-determination and your, your brilliance. That means you were here, you know, no matter how long you get to live or not, you were here and you were marked, right? You were like seen in such a way that you, you, you can't just be deleted, right? And that's powerful. That's powerful. Powerful and necessary. Powerful and necessary. You know, we don't just need visibility and safety in the wider culture. We need it in our own communities. You know, we need it to bring that, that vision of seeing each other as so unique and so special and such a gift. You know, whatever letters of our alphabet you might fit into as LGBTQ plus folks, because we don't do that well either historically <laughs> and presently, you know, it's, it's like, as soon as we expand, we 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 get back into that fear place, you know, of like, will there be room for my identity? Mm -hmm. I don't understand, you know, these ways that people are expanding um, and claiming and naming themselves, you know, so we, we have a lot of work to do, but I'd love to, I'd love to ask you about something else that we didn't talk about beforehand, which is healing and the gift of healing. Because I think that, that so much of what we're talking about, <sighs> healing can be the hardest part. Healing can be the most needed gift and the one that feels the most out of reach. And I personally have been so impressed and grateful and inspired by you the last few years because I feel like you have actively taken on elements of your own healing 
the places where you wanted to heal, the places where you needed new tools and new resources for a changing world. And as becoming a parent and all of the things, the shifts that you've been through this year, how are you thinking about healing? And would you mind sharing a little bit about, you know, your strategies for healing yourself that other folks yeah. might find helpful? And I know that's a big question. <laughs> we only play in the deep end. <laughs> Woo, and I see, I see Jaden talking about also that the scarcity mindset and how strong it is. And oh man, is it ever. And man, can it like clap back when we think we're through it. And then, whoosh, you know, let me remind you. Um, yeah, I think this healing question is so important and so powerful. And it is one of the things you and I have in particular been talking about a lot this year, both in the in the space of ourselves and, and the healing work we have to do in ourselves and that we are working towards. And in our sort of ever changing and ever growing relationship to ourselves as part of a bigger picture of community healing. Um, and so in a minute, I'm gonna ask you about that just to give you the heads up. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, I think that there's There's a lot to be said about, um, you know, I, I want to not fall down a rabbit hole here because there's there's so much to it for for so many people. But you know, you can like, go down the rabbit hole. We got time. <laughs> <laughs> there's wonderful. Um, I guess what I want to say is, you know, I think that there are things around our own healing that have to do with with gaining more and more trust for ourselves in the process so for instance to give a a kind of weird example i was working with a therapist for years who i absolutely loved um they were really the first like therapist relationship i'd ever had that i really truly trusted this person and at the time i was feeling a lot of fears about my mom's passing and that how was i what was going to happen after that and and all these things and this therapist said to me Whatever it is, we'll get through it. And it, your face, right? Like that's, it literally had never occurred to me that someone would say we, right? And that they would stand with me in that and I, whatever it was, that they were gonna, gonna support me and, and help me to, to navigate my way. And the strangest part is that when it finally happened, when my mom did die, <laughs> I found myself in this very peculiar position which was I had to trust myself and myself was saying, I don't wanna be in therapy right now. It doesn't feel right right now. Um, I'm, I'm swimming in this grief right now. It is the air I'm breathing right now. It is so complex that to try and talk about it to someone outside of my own whatever almost felt redundant almost felt like I don't have time to repeat all of this to somebody else. I'm digesting it in the now so rapidly and so deeply that that almost feels like not, not efficient and not a useful way of, of going into my own hearing at the time. And so at the time, and you know this very well, but at the time I basically just battened down the hatches and this is pre COVID, this is, you know, almost seven years ago. And basically I was like, okay, I'm going to try to only do the things that I have to do and not much else besides things which actually feel life giving. And so I basically like stopped being social almost entirely. Um, I focused really hard on just absolutely kicking ass at my job. Cause I was like, if I lose my job right now, I'm screwed. So I focused in there very hard. And then I gave myself permission of like, if you want to watch TV for 10 hours on a day you have off and you don't have other things to take care of, you just go ahead and do that. If you want to wear a dent in that couch, you go on and do that. If you want to, you know, focus on creative outlets that like maybe aren't the ones you loved before, go ahead and do that. So like I got really into cooking my mom's recipes, you know, and so I really all I spent my time creative time doing was cooking, eating, and taking pictures of my <laughs> dishes that I would make, you know, and, and I... I really wasn't seeing anybody for the most part, as you remember. And that's just what I needed. 
I just needed to hole up, you know? And, and so that's one of the ways I think about healing is like, it's grief is so nonlinear. Um, almost everyone is in a state of grief in some ways all the time, but particularly in this era, um, we, we have to find ways to trust what we need, even if they defy the logic of what other people or culturally the world would say we're supposed to need when we feel in grief or in pain or in need of healing. Yeah. Jack, yeah, would you I'd share like to, I, I Sorry. hope you don't mind if I just pick up with yeah. this idea of um, around the gift of healing, the gift of intuition. Because that's really what I hear when you say that is the gift of intuition. Because that almost in some ways informs healing, right? To say, really listen to yourself, take a minute and figure out what do I need? What can I manage at this time what is not serving me and what is serving me and you know I know that through through working for myself and being able to kind of expand my skill set and do just follow passions right work that's interesting do things on the fly figure out okay what makes sense that that gift of intuition is so important and I love the way that you follow yours and I just think you have so much magic in you around that. You know what you need, and then you set a plan and you do it, you know. And, you know, just honor and love to the legacy of your mom, who gave, gave me two of the most important people in my life uh, and gave the world so many gifts through you and your sibling. I want to also love you to the room and thank you for being with us and we adore you. Um, Tinu is another gift. <laughs> yeah. One of our favorite gifts. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, Jack, you and I have always bonded about our relationships with our moms and uh, the stuff that we've been through with our moms and our health and, you know, and now, you know, we're, we've had another piece that is now in common. Um, sometimes a space like this is, is one where it feels good to share about where you're at in your own process of healing and of grief. And sometimes it's a time to share something else about healing and grief that's not about right now. How are you feeling? Well, I'm not sure what I'll say, but I will, I will share here because it's been, you know, you all, we took a break from Instagram Live. And part of that was allowing space for healing. Um, I was doing really intensive caregiving with my mom really the last eight months. Um, and she transitioned out of this life on April 8th. And my mom is the one who gave me perhaps the greatest gift of my life, which is the knowledge of unconditional love and a model for how to show it. Even though, of course, all of our parents are imperfect as we are imperfect. Um, so it wasn't that I saw how love could be always fair, always equal, always showing up the same way. But I had a very clear and consistent model for that we that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. That there's, you can always come back home. There's always going to be a place for you here. Um, and if I keep talking, I'm going to cry. But that those gifts are ones that I have always treasured, at least as an adult, uh, and will always treasure, you know, and will seek to honor her and my other elders and the ones who have passed beyond this veil. Um, every day that I have the capacity and stamina to do so. And, you know, I get super inspired and heartened in thinking about those far-flung elders and ancestors. Yeah. And it is, it is Older Americans Month, which was why, you know, when we were thinking about this topic and thinking about um, the stories we want to tell here in our community on Instagram, I really was feeling that connective tissue between Older Americans Month and this idea of gifts, 
not just for the gift of aging, but for the gift of those relationships, of having relationships with people who have been, who are further down the road. You know, it helps you to have perspective. And I just think for people that don't have relationships with older adults, that's a gift that I would encourage you to seek out because for a million reasons, but at least my experience has been that many of the older adults in my life being around people of a different generation helps me to deal with mine (laughs) and have spaciousness for the ways that time can heal and the gift that time can be that like you don't have to solve every problem in front of you not every challenge has an easy answer but that if you continue moving ahead in your days each day each hour each minute that some of those things might resolve or heal or new solutions may come up. So that's where that's a a lot of stew word stew, but (laughs) that's where my heart has been really. And um, in particular this month, you know, following the loss of my mom and two other close family elders in the winter um, and it being older Americans month, I just think it's that claiming we talked about in the beginning they need it too. They need us. They need us to be a gift to them and to show up for them and to tell them that we care about them and to listen to their stories and ask questions and be in, in meaningful, authentic relationship. So that's what's coming to mind for me, <laughs> which is a lot. It is a lot. It, it brings to my mind two things. Number one, you know, that's stuff I think about a lot for kid because you know I don't have living parents or grandparents that are of my mind Um, and so I'm I'm pretty particular about okay this is stuff that we have to actively seek out and we have to we're gonna we're gonna build you some grandparents (laughs) I I don't mean it that that silly but you know what I'm trying to say Um, and you know you know this because your family is among them you know and when I say yours I mean ours you know and you know, you and I have been having some conversations recently about the words chosen family and, and how they're useful almost in like a um, outside of community way or something. That's like, if you don't know what we're talking about, this is what we're talking about. But that as we're aging, it actually feels like it in some way undermines the familiness of our family. Right? So like when I say, you know, having having your dad as one of my son's grandpas it actually doesn't really it's like it begins to dissolve right so rather than saying your family i feel like saying your side of our family you know because that's that's part of what you know we're in process in together the other piece that really comes to my mind um is you know when you're talking about unconditional love you know, and the honoring of our mothers and their gifts, you know, you know this already, but I like to speak this into the world as often as possible. You know, you, you have taught me what unconditional love means in practice and in action uh, and and daily ritual and rhythm. and as a constant restocking of the well of good life. Um, And so when I hear you talk about that gift from your mom, and I know it's also a gift from your dad as well, you know, and just like you said, your other ancestors as well. Um, Wow, do I honor your mom and thank her, thank her, thank her for teaching you so you could teach me. And so I can teach my guy, also our family, you know, you and I teach our family together. And we also teach them in how we love each other. Yeah, and that's where that expansiveness of, of you know, like, kind of the gifts we give. Because I feel like you and I have always had that expansive lens of, of course, you know, being authentic. But that feeling of more, the more is merrier right? That like your family truly is my family and I want to get to know them and I want to support them and you through the hard times and celebrate the good. 
Like I think that that, that claiming has always been expanded. As we say, we, we have a million sisters between us. <laughs> and they're all. Awesome. <laughs> um, I want to say to everybody who's here with us or watching, we want to thank you so, so much for being a part of this conversation. We have a little bit of time left, um, but I hope that, you know, if you're thinking about who gifts have been in your life or how you are reflecting on being a gift, or if you want to connect with some new people, keep coming back here. We're going to be doing Instagram lives. We've adjusted from weekly to once a month. If capacity changes and if it feels good to go back to once a week, we'll do that. But in this moment, um, our capacity is and ability to really feel like we're showing up with you and have things that we, we want to share is going to be at once a month. So please keep coming back. Keep an eye on us. We're here for you. Let us know what how we can be a gift to you as well. Um, which leads me to kind of our, our closing question, which is I'd love for us to share and maybe for you to share from your perspective as the training manager, some mm -hmm. of the gifts that you're excited about for us to be able to offer our, our beloved communities um, in the months ahead. Anything that you wanna share or highlight from Care Plan World? Yes, I do, actually. Well, first of all, I want to say I see that Zach Moreno just joined. Hello, my darling. So much love to you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and yeah, there really is. Um, you know that I'm, <laughs> you've heard you say I am like a, a care plan man to the core, <laughs> which feels very, um, it's a wonderful life-ish. But anyway, um, you know, there's, for me, I think as someone who grew up in an extremely low income family, um, there's a lot of stuff around, um, around workers and around like some stuff that has to do with dignity and respect and, and creating work lives that are not only tolerable, but are like at least a, a positive or generative part of our lives, as opposed to just like a drain on our lives that we have to stomach. Um, and I think, you know, there are so many ways that our culture is not really ready to talk about class yet. Um, and and the, the intersectional fuckery, for lack of a term, of the ways that- it Never has been, right. never has been. Class exactly. is always last on the list. You know, you'll see a, <laughs> we do probably like at this point, 50 to 60 trainings or workshops a year. I can tell you I have never gotten a request to talk about classism or class dynamics. Yeah. We're always the ones bringing it up. Right, <laughs> it's right. just and not out there. It, right. And weaving it in, even though it's not something people requested, because we, we have to, you know. But so one of the gifts that, that we are bringing right now um, that I just am so moved by and inspired by and excited about is the, the new initiative that we're doing around wellness at work. Because you know, the stuff that we've worked on in there is really about addressing the needs of workers in the now with people are going through in this era of COVID, in this era of just so much, not just loss, but uncertainty. Uh, there is, I think, a, a, obviously a huge shift in people's perspectives around what work is, what work is not, what they're willing to deal with at work and what they're not. But also, you know, there's been a cutting of strings um, of, of ways that people felt stuck in certain kinds of work previously that, you know, all of this sort of stood on its head. And we're, we're entering in through our work at the care plan in a, a, a sort of perspective of saying yes. And that means companies are struggling because the people are struggling. Now, the people have always been struggling. That's not news. But we're in a different era of struggle. And we're in an era of struggle in which a different level of organizing is possible. We're obviously seeing a huge tidal wave of refreshed union energy and, and organizing, which is incredible. But also, there's a lot of places that there isn't union organizing or where union organizing would be very difficult to achieve or make sense. 
And so, you know, not that we don't love collaborating with unions because we do, but there's a lot of places where I think our work, we're able to get in and work with organizations from leadership to frontline workers, to everybody in between and to the communities that they're part of to really start to massage and chew on how do we create systems in which workers are supported to thrive at work, in which self-care is prioritized by a company, not something that's an afterthought, in which organizations understand that their workers are their biggest asset and that treating people as disposable especially now, is the fastest way to run a company into the ground. And we're seeing it everywhere. And so I'm really super proud of that work. It's work that I like sink my teeth into very naturally. Um, yeah, so for me, that's, that's a big one. And that's something that, that is a gift that I'm really committed to supporting in the world. I love that. And I see that we have some hearts and some sweetness coming our way. So it sounds like folks really appreciate what you're saying as well. And for people who may have questions or who are like, you know, new to this space, on the care development side, we really work with organizations to provide uh, a variety of consulting services, facilitation, team retreats, building workshops and, and everything from trauma-informed care to um, supervision best practices. We do a lot, a really wide variety of trauma-informed trainings and LGBTQ affirming uh, trainings. But the well Vic is talking, sorry, the Wellness at Work series that Vic is talking about is designed for organizations to improve that morale, to improve that transparency and communication and safety at work by supporting workers. And so the way that we've structured it, it's designed to be a six month series that any organization can request. Um, and we can do more or less, but typically six months helps to create a different team dynamic and usher in a, a different kind of culture of care. Um, so we do, each module is designed specifically for the needs of that, that staff and team. And also, <laughs> we're in, always in relationship with leadership to do their work with them as well. So the Wellness at Work series, six-month series, um, we can do a variety of topics. We do a lot of relationship and team building, a lot of work on communication and you know, work dynamics. We definitely talk about self-care and self-preservation in a realistic and practical way. So those are some of the tools that we are, um, or should I say gifts, that we are um, more publicly going to be offering uh, in the next couple of months. So you'll see things about that coming through. I think for me, the gift that's on my heart is comparing notes. You know, mm -hmm. since becoming a manager, the first time I was promoted, I felt so lonely. I felt so lonely because I was working in a small business. I was the only black woman there and one of only two people of color. And once you get promoted to management, your circle of support gets smaller. And so I really wanted to create a space for uh, folks of color or who identify as LGBTQ plus to receive peer mentorship and leadership. Because I tell you, I, I have wanted a space like Comparing Notes since that first day I became a manager and even more so when I started the business. Because y'all, it is tough to find like resources that are culturally affirming and aren't just about making the bottom line, you know, and making as much money as you can. Which We're a value-centered organization and we do value-centered work. So those spaces don't feel that great. <laughs> So comparing notes is the one that I feel like is, is one of the unique gifts that we're offering. And I wonder, Vic, would you mind just describing that here as we close? And then we'll, because the wind's picking up and I want to be sure people hear about it. <laughs> Come on, desert wind. Um, yes. So comparing notes is a, a leadership circle, basically. And, you know, like many things within the care plan, we define that leadership really broadly. So you may be an ED. You may be a small business owner or an entrepreneur who's just getting started. You may be a manager, or you may be somebody who's a community leader, a community organizer. You may just be someone who is exploring that part of yourself. And really, that catchment is wide. We, we make that net wide 
very purposefully so that there's opportunities for cross pollination. Um, and we found that that's, that is our most generous or generative space is when we're, we're really having a lot of different perspectives in the room. And so we've, oh, thank you. Jack just put up the, the info for it. It is an opportunity in which we will talk about specific things each time. So let's say communication might be one time, uh, but we'll, we'll have specific things that we might share as best practices. And then we'll also have small group work where everybody gets the opportunity to really mentor each other and to share the experiences that they've had in order to really kind of skill share and not have to keep reinventing the wheel. Because for so many of us, actually in reality, most people who, for instance, are in a management or, or supervisory role, get no training on how to do that <laughs> or how to do it well, God forbid, you know? And so it's, it is way for us to come from our own values as people from marginalized communities in how to ethically lead and how to support each other and amplify each other's work also in a space of, of mutual admiration, right? So it's also an opportunity to connect with people from other organizations or other businesses who you might have some amazing things in, in common with um, and, and build relationships and trust there and, and really tighten the fabric of our, our overlapping communities. Beautifully said, folks, we hope that you'll join us. Again, if you're a BIPOC leader or an LGBTQ plus leader, or just have a dream that you want to work through with a good sounding board that again shares values or, or some of those intersections of your identities, we would love and appreciate for you to join us. Um, those workshops are held monthly, the second Wednesday of every month. The next one coming up is June 8th, and we'll do peer support, and then we'll be talking about LGBTQ plus leadership lessons. So from LGBTQ plus leaders like Bayard Rustin um, and folks that are leading today, folks like Messiah Wade, how do we lead in accordance with our values? So we'll be, we'll be highlighting some really amazing people um, and give you some hopefully new ideas and inspiration. So my friend, I think that's all we have time for today. I cannot thank you enough for joining me. This has been so much fun. Feels good to be with you and be sharing sharing our thoughts that are typically behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. But just yeah. like this. <laughs> just like this, just not in front of anybody else. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a so pleasure next... to welcome into our little, our little bubble that we do. <laughs> so next month, y'all, we're going to be... Um, our theme in terms of social media is you are a story. So we'll be really excited to hear some of your stories, whether it's about caregiving or leadership or your health journey, we want to hear from you. So reach out. We're here. If you need resources, reach out. We're here. If you want to bring a training or a workshop or the wellness at work series to your organization, reach out. We'd love to support you uh, in furthering your personal mission and, and personal impact and legacy. Thank you all for being a gift. Thank you all for being part of our community. And may you keep moving and, and be in accordance with your values and what you want to give to the world. So take care, everybody. Take care, dear Vic Motherwell. And I hope that you all catch us next month. Love you too. Bye-bye. <laughs>